It's always a disappointment when a cherished leader falls morally. Somebody that we've looked up to turns out to not quite be the person we thought they were. Hi, Alex McFarland here. Welcome to the Truth For New Generation webcast. And I want to talk a little bit about some of the allegations that have come out about the late Ravi Zacharias. And I want to read a letter from a listener. Let me give just a little bit of backstory. Um, Ravi, in the Christian world, was a, really a rock star. He was an apologetics writer and speaker. Very brilliant. I mean, to hear him speak, you know, even atheists that uh, rejected his message had to admit the guy was articulate, he was erudite, knowledgeable on so many subjects, and by all accounts, he made uh, quite a name for himself. He read a lot of books. He spoke all around the world. In the last year of his his life, and he passed away in early 2020, but in the last 12 months of his life, Ravi Zacharias Ministries took in over $24 million. My goodness, uh, financially and uh, name recognition-wise, the guy was a big success. But even before he died, there had been rumors about improprieties, and now that he's passed away, some very incriminating things have come out, and it's kind of, it's been at best a disappointment, and for some people that we've heard from, they're just really crestfallen that this cherished leader turns out to have been uh, a guy who didn't live what he preached. Um, I will say this very briefly. I uh, had about a decade ago some interaction with Ravi regarding a, a colleague, and Ravi said to me in uh, many meetings, he said to me something that really disturbed me. He said, sometimes people in leadership have to do things that are uh, not honest. Uh, he said, sometimes leaders have to do things that are, that are not of integrity. And I really push back against that. And, and in another show, maybe I'll unpack some of this particular uh, interaction that really did become a wedge in our in our friendship but but I want to say this that the truth of Christianity is not contingent on the behavior of Christians and that's that's a little bit dicey because when a professed Christian does things that are ungodly the watching world says ah the messenger is not authentic therefore the message might not be authentic. Well, James from Michigan writes to us and asks about this. And he says, I listen to you on the radio as often as I can. I recently heard of this scandal, and I wonder if you had any input. And before I could even respond to his email, he writes this beautiful letter, which is really my sentiment exactly. He said, uh, I've been praying on this. The Holy Spirit has revealed to me that overcoming sin cannot be done through the mind. Overcoming sin can only be done through the heart. Doesn't Jesus say, I know you love me when you obey my commands? Because if we truly love him and want to be with him more than anything, then we will want more than anything to obey his word. Because in the end, there is faith, hope, and love, but the greatest among them is love. James, you're right on the money. If we have a sin problem, it's because we have a heart problem, and we need to allow his most Holy Spirit to reach into and change our heart, again, because we want him to. When our love for God and for others is greater than the love of self. James, you're right on the money. And this is something that I saw in the apologetics world. You know, I flew in a lot of high orbits and academics, and I would talk to people and say, look, learn C.S. Lewis, memorize Aristotle's first principles. I get it. I love the academic side of apologetics. But even some apologists said, oh, Alex is weak because whenever we have the meetings backstage, he talks about the heart. He doesn't talk about uh, Plato, Socrates, and first principles and forms and Augustine and all that. Look, I know all that stuff. I got multiple degrees in it. But here's the point. We might have the greatest intellect in the world. We might have memorized volumes of data, but if our heart is not yielded to Jesus and our life not controlled by the Holy Spirit, as 1 Corinthians 13 says, hey man, it's just metal banging together. And so, I want to challenge you. Listen, uh, Ravi did some good. Sadly, he had some issues in his life that apparently had not been yielded to Christ. But keep your eyes on Jesus, because while a Christian might let you down, Christ never will. James, thanks for writing, and I want to challenge you folks, stand strong for truth, and thanks for watching.
God has a purpose to train you in what you're called to do, and I tell you, Karis Bible College is the place for that. Man, if you want a life change, come to Karis. Come on to Karis! You need to take a step of faith and start believing God for something big. God made every one of you for something special. The next two to three years could be the most powerful time of your life.